Hello everyone, Stepan here. Uh, finally recording a game. I played some games which I'm actually happy I haven't managed to record. Uh, last game I played, you, you can see it on the on my leeches profile. I just hung a piece and okay I'm, I'm gonna try to go to into a sort of pseudo Catalan again. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to go g3 and see what my opponent does. Uh, just like in the previous game, I, I'm gonna try to learn or get familiar with the Catalan setups. Now the Catalan is something that's been... Uh, something that I was afraid of for a long time. Uh, if I'm gonna be perfectly honest, it seems like an opening for grown-ups. It seems hard to start playing the, the Catalan, just like I have any rational fear of playing the Spanish or the mainline Sicilians as black. So I've just decided to, to start doing it. Uh, here I think bishop g4 or bishop f5 are the most common moves. Uh, I actually play this way with black. Okay, my opponent uh, chose to just keep the bishop in. This is kind of strange, the bishop should go to f5. Uh, there are however fewer weaknesses now. Uh, in the black position. So now I can choose to play with c4 uh, and I'm, I'm gonna do that and if this is taken I believe we're going into the main line open Catalan positions and if it's not taken we're in the closed lines so we will see. Uh, the bishop has already moved so if this is taken uh, I think I can get away with knight a3, but I'm not sure. Again, I don't know much about this. Uh, I'm just trying to learn it and I'm trying to sort of go along with uh, what my opponent does and I'm trying to figure it out. For now, either a4 or knight a3 or knight c3 or knight e5 are what comes to mind. I think. I'm gonna go knight e5. That seems to be the most aggressive way to play. Also prevents b5, uh, so this seems fun. And it, I, I think it's also correct. So this is basically the open Catalan with c6. Now We will see what happens. I mean, I think you can understand. Uh, I think you can understand my fear when it comes to the Catalan and the Catalan setups because if you make a mistake as white, you're going to be a pawn down, and if you make a mistake as black, you're going to give the pawn back and have a bad bishop. So in this case. Uh, I believe I should just take on c4 and my position should be fine. But I'm not sure if there are any tricks on c6. Although I don't think I don't think there are. So I'm I'm, I'm just gonna take the pawn. Uh, and now I'm playing against this bad bishop. So black is gonna have to play c5 or e5 at some point to liberate the bishop. And I'm gonna try to set up a blockade on both squares, if if possible. Uh, I also would like to go knight c3 e4 and claim some central space. Uh, the thing I'm never sure about in the Catalan is where my dark squared bishop should go. My opponent's name is Big Boss Rabbit. That's a strange name. Someone said once. Uh, I, I mentioned someone. someone's name was strange and then someone said in the comments your name is HPY, <laughs> you didn't get to say anything, and that, that's true. But hanging pawns was taken, so I just... I did that. By the way, I'm at Lucia's parents' place, I'm not at home. Uh, we are. We took a trip, a two-day trip for, for New Year's, like for, for the holidays. And we are going to the south of Croatia. Uh, 
Now I don't know this and I'm not sure what I should be doing. Uh, I don't think I want to trade this strengthening c5. Uh, I would like to go knight back to e5 uh, if, if I can. So I'm, I'm just going to decline the trade. I'm going to pretend like I'm playing an IQP position even though I still have the e pawn. Because now I'm blocking e5 and he could go c5. But my bishop is open along the diagonal and... Yeah, and I was actually threatening to take on c6. Okay, so now, uh, rook e8 would hang an exchange after... No, it actually wouldn't. It would be two pawns and the rook for two knights, so that wouldn't be such an excellent trade. Let's, let's just develop a piece. Uh, I'm expecting something like knight d5. Uh, for the moment, I'm still playing against this diagonal. So I'm kind of happy. And the way to punish a knight on b6 is to go a4, a5. If he ever gets to, if he ever has to play a5, then that weakens uh, this break as well because it permanently leaves b6 weak. Uh, and again, where does my dark squared bishop go? That's why I'm playing these games. I have no idea where my dark squared bishop should go. And what I do with these games afterwards uh, is I will sit down on an actual board and figure out where I went wrong. So I will, if I've managed to follow theory uh, during my games, I will actually find reference games and see what good players did with their bishops. Because at this point, I, I don't really know where this bishop belongs. Uh, my d4 pawn is loose. That much is clear. Uh, I know that I would like to trade off these two bishops because, okay, uh, this is his good bishop. Uh, now I was thinking e3, but I can also just take. Uh, so if I take bishop takes, uh, then I can go, for example, bishop g5, but then the structure is symmetrical. I cannot go d5. If I go e3, Uh, then I cannot go e4 later, but then again, if he goes knight d5, do I really want to go e4 if I don't have a d pawn? I, I don't know. <clears throat> Can I somehow use the pressure on b7? Uh, maybe, but I don't see how. Uh, knight b5 doesn't make much sense. Taking on c5 would give his bishop a nice square. If I go e3, takes, takes, bishop d6, I'm not afraid of him taking. Uh, I think I do want to go e3. I, I don't want to give up these two squares. I don't really care about the IQP. Of course, he has a perfect blockade setup, but. And it would have been preferable to, to get my bishop to g5. So maybe I should have played bishop g5 instead of knight c3. But then again, I don't want to take on f6 if he plays h6. So I think this is fine. Maybe I'm going to try to go uh, b3 and bishop b2 to set up my bishop on this diagonal. Uh, because he doesn't have knight c4 if I go b3. One thing about Lucia's parents' place is that they don't have a coffee machine, so we're drinking... Uh, how do you call this type of coffee? Uh, do you know the Italian uh, mocha machine? So it's not... Uh, what do you call that? The, the, the brass, it's not brass, it's thin, I think. Uh, thing that you, you, you screw it in and then it, the steam comes out and the coffee comes out. I think it's called mocha. So they drink that. Uh, it's better, that, I mean, it's not as strong, so I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, 
Okay, blocking the diagonal. Uh, I need my rook on c1. So maybe I do play bishop d2 in this position. Uh, I don't really want to go bishop e3. Uh, and if he goes knight b4, uh, then I cannot go rook c1. I would have to go bishop e3 uh, or bishop g5 because I need to defend. But I definitely need to move my bishop somewhere. Uh, Let's actually look at that. Bishop e3, knight takes, pawn takes. I'm on the f6 knight. No, I don't like that. So I'm going bishop d2. Uh, if he takes, <coughs> I take with the pawn. If he plays knight b4, I'm gonna go bishop e3 and then on knight d5. I don't know. Uh, again, I'm just trying to play against this bishop. In an IQP position, I really would like my bishop on this diagonal, so I may have made a strategic mistake of going into an IQP with my bishop on the other diagonal, but it seemed to me that keeping the outpost on e5 and sort of limiting the e7 bishop by not allowing it to go to c5 was a good idea. Anyway, I'm, I'm drinking suboptimal coffee, in my opinion. I, uh, the only oh I have to plug in my laptop sorry the only coffee I really love is the uh, the really thick uh, strong uh, espresso or even ristretto so you get you get this much of the coffee but when you take a sip it's it's like fireworks I don't like those watered down american types of coffee that's just i don't know it's like like drinking water with with some stuff in it uh moving the b pawn would be risky in light of knight c6 so uh can i just punish this with knight b5 <clears throat> i'm guessing the rook would have to go back to a8 or a6 would have to be played uh, for now, I'm just going rook c1. Uh, b6 loses immediately. Because of knight c6, and if queen d6, I can actually take on, on e7 first, and only then take on b8. So rook b8 lines up with my knight I, I don't like that move now i'm actually threatening to go knight b5 and knight c7 dominating his position or even okay <clears throat> prevents knight b5 uh, now i could consider taking so takes on d5, knight takes, or even pawn takes. He could open up his bishop. Yeah, he could go pawn takes. Uh, I could also consider queen b3, followed by knight a4, knight b6. That seems like domination. So queen b3, if he goes b5, I again go knight c6. Uh, Queen b3, my idea is knight a4, knight b6. That seems very strong. I'm going to do that. It also develops my queen. Uh, and it gives me the option to go rook fd1, going opposite the black queen. So now the black queen doesn't have a single good square, because if queen b6, I can just take. Uh, and if knight takes, I take with the bishop. And if pawn takes, I take the queen. If queen takes queen, I take with the bishop. And on knight takes queen takes queen, I go knight f6 winning a piece or knight e7 winning a piece. Knight e7 is better. Okay. Uh, he's covering c6, but is he really? I can go knight takes d5 and knight c6. Uh, or bishop takes d5. Or also, sorry, he's not covering c6 after knight a4. After knight a4, b5, knight c6. 
if he takes on a4, I take the rook. Uh, so knight a4, b5, knight c6, uh, b a4, <coughs> queen b8, or, or, yeah, queen b8. So knight a4, threatening to take everything on d5 and play knight b6. What else do I have? Uh, knight a4. b5 doesn't worry me. On bishop d7, I think I can just take. Okay, I'm gonna do that. He could go queen b4. No, he, he cannot. I take with the bishop. <coughs> also, knight c5 isn't bad. Also, if I can play rook c7, that isn't bad. Uh, because knight c5 threatens knight a6 if the queen moves. I don't know. I don't know if I'm playing like a thematic Catalan. I've, I've managed to go into an IQP from the Catalan, which I'm not sure is what you do. But I, I've managed to lock down this bishop. Uh, it's still on its original square. Okay, uh, so should I just double my rooks? Now I don't have knight c6 in this position because he takes and the queen defends the rook. But I could consider bishop a5 and on b6 knight c6 because he cannot take on a5 after i go knight c6 so bishop a5 seems very strong bishop a5 what does he do bishop a5 if b6 then knight c6 if b a5 then i just go queen b8 i'm gonna do that that seems strong I think my isolated queen spawn is <clears throat> what's giving me a huge edge here because it's keeping his bishop blocked in. His bishop on c8 is just a dreadful piece. Also now the knight on d5 is tied down completely to c7. If I play bishop c7 he loses a piece. He loses a full rook. I believe I could be winning already, because he has to move the rook back. And then if I don't have anything concrete, I can just uh, double up my rooks or play rook fd1. How do I get rid of the knight on d5? I could... I could go knight c3 and then on b6 if I take on d5 and he takes on a5 I take on f6 he takes with the pawn and he's on my queen and on my knight so that's not good so not knight c3 It seems like the Catalan had gone really well, although again I'm not sure this is thematic at all. Ah, 
I wish I had. I, I'm gonna start taking my espresso machine with me. That's uh, another thing I've decided when I go to tournaments. I'm, I'm I'm gonna head out for a tournament in two days, and I'm gonna bring my espresso machine with me. Okay, now uh, knight b6 seems ex extremely strong because uh, I'm just threatening to take on d5 and so knight b6 if he takes i go bishop b6 and i threaten bishop c7 if he goes knight d5 i take it uh and then he takes with the queen hmm. maybe i bring my rook into play okay i think i have to block for the moment the square so I'm gonna go knight b6 it feels like my pieces my two knights are dominating all of his major pieces somehow <clears throat> so I'm feeling that this has to be good surely this has to be taken if it isn't taken I can just take on, on d5 and and play bishop c7 so knight d5 knight d5 bishop d5 queen d5 queen d5 e d5 bishop c7 rook a8 what did i really get Well, now, this is even more straightforward. So knight d5, he wants to go bishop b5, but he doesn't have time for it immediately. He has to play knight takes. So knight d5, knight d5. Bishop takes, he cannot take with the queen, because I trade and take on d7. And if he takes with the pawn, I go bishop c7. Yeah, that's it. This is it. I'm winning. I'm just threatening bishop c7. So knight takes leads to bishop takes. Pawn takes leads to bishop c7. Knight takes, bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes, leads to knight d7. Knight takes, bishop takes, pawn takes, leads to bishop c7. I think this is it. Unless he can throw in b6 at some point. He put the bishop on an undefended square, everything worked out tactically, but now the bishop is loose on d7, so he cannot defend c7 anymore. <clears throat> I mean, he has to take the piece. If he plays b6 now, I can just take it, because I have three guys and I'm a piece and a pawn up. No, or actually on b6, b6 I can just go bishop b4. Because my knight defends b4. Let's look at knight takes, bishop takes, b6. Maybe he gets away that way. Okay, this I have to take. He probably plays b6 now. <clears throat> but I believe I can go knight d7. 
Knight d7, queen d7, bishop c6. B a5, bishop d7, rook b3, bishop e8. So knight d7, if queen d7, bishop c6. Knight d7, if queen d5, then I just take on b8, yeah. Okay, this is fine. So let's look at this. That knight d7, b8, knight b8. Knight d7, queen d7, bishop c6, yes, this works. He cannot take my queen. I'm just a piece up. He probably just has to take on d4. Then I go bishop c3, and that's the end of the game. Or I can... No, I don't go bishop c3. I take on e8. Absurd. I'm, a, I'm up a piece and the exchange. Unless he goes queen d6. Then I just retreat my bishop. Yeah, bishop d7 was a mistake, but maybe he was losing anyway. I don't know, my pieces just seemed very strong. I love this setup. This Catalan is giving me excellent positions. I just, I won the last two. Okay, in the first one my opponent blundered horribly. He was down two pawns by move 10. But this, I feel like I was outplaying my opponent strategically. With the IQP. That's it. I mean, there are no more moves. Uh, okay, so now I have to save my bishop. If I take on e8, he can take on a5. Because the rook is defended. So, where do I want my bishop? I don't know. Uh, probably on b4. I mean, I would like to trade down, because he still has to move the rook. So let's go bishop b4. He cannot take on d4, because I win the exchange. And with this trade, uh, I'm getting his queen away from the d4 pawn. Yeah. Yes! Okay, well played. He said well played, I'm gonna sell, say well played. Uh, let's analyze. Uh, okay, so d4... Okay, pseudo Catalan, bishop g2, and as I said, in the last game my opponent had played bishop f5, and bishop g4 is also playable. c6 or e6 is a move, but why would you want your bishop inside of the pawn chain? I don't know, castles. Bishop e7, c4, takes, knight e5. Okay, let's, let's do it with the engine. Knight takes c4. Knight b6 is actually a move. Okay, knight e5 is a move. Castles. Queen c2 was the only move played here, but knight c3 is okay. We are transposing to something more familiar. And people go dc5, although e3 is fine. Takes, takes. Knight bd5. Bishop d2 is inaccurate. Okay, I should have gone rook e1. Can you guys see the engine lines? Yes, you can. I moved this up. So, why not bishop d2? The engine plays h4, or I can understand a3, a3 makes sense, I don't understand rook e1. Why would I want my rook on the e file? I, I don't get rook e1. Bishop d2 makes more sense to me, but it's inaccurate. I don't get rook b8 because it doesn't threaten to move the b pawn. Rook c1 is okay, a6 is not okay. Queen b3 is inaccurate. Again, rook e1. Why rook e1? What's the point? So rook e1, bishop d7, and it gives g4. And then g5. Who would do that? I would never do that. It gives knight a4. I get knight a4. Queen b3, queen d6. Oof. 
Rook f a1 again. Okay, I, I have to see what this is about. So rook f a1. Let's see why this is the engine line. Let's play the engine move for black. a5. Okay. Bishop takes d5. Knight takes d5. Knight takes d5. Queen takes d5. Ah, I get it now. The bishop is not defended. Knight c6. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's incredible. Knight a4. Losing my advantage. The other way to play for a weak advantage was rook fd1. I get that. Knight a4. Rook d8. Yeah, bishop a5. Rook e8. Knight b6. Yeah, now wait. Bishop d7. Knight c4 was best. Wait, 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 wait. Knight bc4. Ooh, that makes sense. The queen is trapped. Oof. Oh, why didn't I see that? The queen has no squares. <gasps> Oof. I didn't see that. Oh. I just saw that knight takes d5 is good. And it is good. So, I went for it. There is no way to save the position. But I didn't see that the queen was trapped. Okay, uh, so I played theory in the pseudo-Catalan. My opponent was the first one to deviate. And I went for an IQP, which was relatively thematic. And I did manage to win. Yes, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.